Megan Rose here with Soul Work, and I have another Kundalini question, and this one I think is so helpful for so many people, because the the whole process of having so many um, awakening symptoms can be um, confusing. We can get stuck into it, and then knowing if it's Kundalini or like what exactly is it, and what do you study, what do you look at from here when you're experiencing all these things, you know, where do you go from here? And most new agers just get stuck in the experience of these things when there's a whole other world outside of it. So I really appreciate this opportunity to talk more in depth about this today. So to get to the question, uh, she talks about, I had an initial uh, awakening, opening a few for a few years and then more recently in December 2018, I started experiencing all kinds of symptoms. Waves of intense bliss, bugs crawling all over me, flashes of light, clear audience messages that sounded like beautiful music, ear ringing, increased synchronicities, food, food sensitivities, hypersensitivity, instant access to latent um, capacities, a lot of processing layers and more. And then the thing is, I'm not sure if I've ever felt anything in my spine. I've also never had any shaking, jerking, kriyas. So some of these symptoms stayed with me all the time, the ear ringing, synchronicities, food sensitivities, etc. And some of them faded away and increased during eclipses, cosmic influences. Now I think I might be going through what people call the dark night of the soul. And it's so challenging because I have children. I am up and down going through these extreme changes. I am also sick. I have issues with my ovaries. I cause very intense pain and hormonal disruption. Maybe the health issues could be causing the energy to stay away from my spine. Uh, could you please tell me if this is Kundalini? Thank you so much. And there's a lot of aspects of this that this um, it, it, there is Kundalini activity. All of this is like the the shaking of things to allow greater grace, love, light to integrate into your being. And uh, there's people that, yes, that have Kundalini activity and they don't feel that moving up their spine, so to speak, not yet anyway. And uh, you know, as people have heart opening and um, just that prana that actually um, helps that to happen. A lot of that is that that force of Kundalini. That's that. Um, that's like the initiator of these things uh, to allow a lot of these things to actually happen. Now our our beings are like an ecosystem. If you think of it like a lake. And uh, the way that I like to see it is if there's, if you just imagine with me here that your lake has a slate bottom and then through experience and time, um, you know, experiencing pain and difficulties and just life, um, you get a lot of sand and soot and maybe algae and just this, this, um, all this on the bottom of your ecosystem lake. And Kundalini is this action of like helping to actually bring these things up to clear. Now within that, you're starting to become more sensitive to all of these things we have available to us. Like, you know, sometimes it's almost, it sounds like almost church music or like um, just like a symphony, you know, to be able to just hear that is, you know, so to some people may sound crazy and then to others, like it's just a very normal experience to hear these things or um, the, the flashes of light and, you know, again, just all of these symptoms that come with it. These are called arising and passing. These are just, uh, it's a cycle that you go through within the process of awakening. So very normal. And uh, so then it's like, okay, I like to compare these things also with like light coming in. So you have light coming into your lake and it's illuminating all of this nastiness. And so, so this nastiness is coming up to be cleared and when it, you stir a lake, it gets cloudy, right? It gets mucky and so that's like that dark night of the soul. Things are getting stirred up to be released. Said you have this light coming in and so you're actually able to see so much more and experience more and then that's on the, the higher notes of light, life and the, the lower notes of life or what we'd consider um, good and bad or experiences that we you know enjoy and crave or this bliss and things that our personality would um, say is just you know or interpret as being wonderful and then things that seem more dense and hard to move through and um, that are just like the slower heavier vibration and so we just have this mix of things and as you're awakening it's like really cleaning that lake of um, those dense experiences or integrating them in a different way and um, so if you're thinking of it as like bringing up the sand to release it um, 
to eventually get to that nice clean slate bottom and um, have this beautiful clear lake to swim in to have this and allow just as much light to filter through as possible without any disruptions is kind of <laughs> kind of <laughs> what we're doing here right we're allowing um, and, and really clearing your system to allow as much light as possible to come in, filter through, and so we can be that light in the world. So we can live and walk and, um, it, you know, be with our children, be with, um, you know, business, be in the world and carry this light and be uh, and experience things in a different way. So, yes, I'm sure you, you know, the, you do have kundalini activity. So, studying the um, kundalini traditions can help you just understand where you are on the map and you talk about the um, the health things and how that can impact energy and there's so many aspects to this of like you're looking at the entire ecosystem so yes like if there's energy things going on physically there's got to be an energetic component as well um, not to say that's like the for sure reason why you're not experiencing anything up your spine it's just it's a balance as you move through veils, as you balance in so many different areas of your life. You know, it's not just a physical experience. Uh, if you look at uh, the root glaciers and the um, the reasons why we suffer, the the ignorance and the attachment and aversions aversion to things and just really evaluate yourself honestly on something like that you can really see the areas where you're holding onto like the sand and algae and dirt and grime that's keeping the true light from really moving through your being and so that can be just really helpful to look at um, ways that you can heal outside of that and grounding more light in and I talk about that back heart space and just really doing the soul work I was talking to a girl the other day and she's been consistently doing things for a while and it, it gets to a point where to really make the change of living in a world where your perception is just um, material based, like emotional based from the, like how most people interpret life to the way of, like you said, you're processing these layers and you're living at a, at a place from your your soul and experiencing life from that point it takes a little bit of a sprint and dedication to get there so it takes um it really takes some dedication and just a hard like okay i'm going to go through the inertia in my being to get um embodiment in my being to really forge new pathways in my mind to allow these things to embody in um let me just look through this question quick here make sure that I'm hitting everything yeah and you, you don't necessarily have to experience the shaking and jerkings and kriyas and, and those things could also come along the way um, I explained before like the, the wheel of like where we are spiritually and there may be things that you're highly developed in in certain areas and other areas not so much or areas that you're very clear and uh, have enough vibration to be able to uh, ground it and sustain it in a grounded way that doesn't just like shock your system. Um, <laughs> one thing that's coming through to say too is things should be challenging on the path. Um, there's kind of this idea like you're already there. Oh, just just enjoy. You're already you know you're already there. You just have to open to it, and um, that's really held a lot of people. From actually moving on the path where they need to it's like an excuse and so um, there's just there's work that we get to do and as we process and move through these layers it can be really difficult and that's not a bad thing you know we so often interpret you know things that seem hard to the personality as um, bad or not serving and yet it could be the things that are serving our soul and our process more than anything so just to have some perspective on that of like when you're moving through the dark night of the soul and you're experiencing these things to keep doing the work and it's a good thing like you're bringing it up to just release it to allow it to move out and you know again I'm not a licensed um, psychologist or practitioner or anyone that you should you know hold me accountable in any reason for your own mental health and advice that said there's um, 
there's a lot of things that you can benefit from through doing this and it's too hard for me to describe this in a, um, a video like this that multiple people watch. Uh, you get good at processing through these things and you get to start to understand what you are processing and how to process it more efficiently and how to not identify and create more of a story with it and allow those things to process through. Um, yeah, it can be challenging with children. That said, when you get this, when you have a family and you're a householder, you really get it. It's um, to be able to have infinite patience, unconditional love, to have this, um, like it's a constant. You're constantly giving beyond yourself when you are a householder. And uh, I think this is, it sets you up for the greatest spiritual work by by being in this experience at this time that this is where you are at because um, it doesn't stop and uh, it really gives you a chance to um, put something else before yourself and to really learn you constantly have a mirror your emotions and your vibration are constantly mirrored through your children how you emotionally hold your household is constantly mirrored um, in your experience and uh, it's a really great opportunity so again yes it may be more difficult so to speak in the beginning compared to you know like I see all these spiritual people online who don't have children it's like oh they're living their best life and they can just do whatever they want when they want and meditate all day if they want do yoga all day if they want and uh, you know what they're not being put up to the wall constantly they're not being put up to the pressures of putting something else unconditionally in loving before themselves at all times and so there's dynamics within this that you get to benefit from so just know that every single circumstance in your life is i i get to experience this i get to live through this map right now i get to live through this curriculum right now because it is exactly what i need it is serving me because this is what i'm experiencing and so when it goes from like i have to or i'm i'm, I'm limited by this it, it limits the energy and to really change everything to and i get to it, it changes a lot I get to raise my children. I get to be there for my children. I get to go through these health issues. I get to, um, you know, through these health issues, see where there's energetic blocks. It really puts me in a spot where, you know, I'm motivated to look at these things where before maybe I wouldn't be as motivated or whatever it may be. So I hope that can help. Um, sending so much love to you. Uh, I really appreciate, especially this particular person has been commenting a lot and I'm glad that the videos have been um, just beneficial thus far. Let me just see if there's anything else that wants to come through. So I recommend for people who are doing soul work with families to, um, to really have a system in place, especially in the morning and in, in the evening. And, uh, and then I, I incorporate things throughout the day, especially my driving time uh, and running errands, whether it's mantras or books that I'm listening to or the particular kind of music that I'm listening to to help raise vibrations, to clear things. So I just get into these routines. On my phone, I have an app. Uh, it's called uh, A Note. And you, I mean, you, I think you could just use a basic note app. I just in particular like this one. And I put, um, you know, these get to statements, these statements of like, what maybe limiting thoughts that I've had about certain areas of my life and then really doing the change around on them. And it's not just like a fake affirmation. It's just like a really changing what opportunities there are for me in every single moment. And so I read through those. I have um, prayers that are incredibly powerful for disciples, people on the path who are bringing in their soul selves to be a light of love in this world. Um, so I really bring in those things because there's energies that are attached to these things that really uplift your being to be able to stay in these higher vibration states. Um, so everything I learn along the way that I find valuable, I put in these notes. So I'm consistently and constantly going back to them for inspiration. And when I wake up in the morning, these are the first things I read. So there's two, uh, well, 
yeah, there's two main times, like, or you could say three, that you are most susceptible to working with your subconsciousness. So there's this where you first wake up in the morning, before you go to bed, and right after meditation. And so to really work within that, and then also before bed, I look at these things as well and go through, there's like a lot of empowerment statements. And again, just, you know, whatever you're finding on your spiritual journey, and as you grow, you'll find things that are meant for you to just work with. Um, things to really make intentions in my life and constantly come back to those things spiritually. Um, so yeah, th that's something that I feel like is really beneficial and helpful in my process. And I hope that, um, you know, if you choose to do something like this as well, that it can benefit you and everyone around you. So wishing you the very best. Take care.